Look at this. <laughs> what an edit, by the way. Was this you? Yeah. That is brilliant. They must have made this. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Ben Foster. Welcome to another episode of the Fozcast. Today, we have got a couple of YouTube legends. We have got Thogden. How are we doing? And we've got Thogdad. Hey, it's great to be here, Ben. Honestly, Absolutely guys. Absolutely brilliant. Aren't we? We are buzzing to have these guys here today. Big fans. Absolutely Big fans. massive fans. Before we start, okay, can you just show your shirt into that camera over there, please, Thogden? You need to see it. You need to just see have it. a look at this shirt. Yeah. Thogdad beer. He's got Bolton on there. Thogdad. No son of mine drinks a Coke. It's well class. Right, we've got a surprise for you guys. Have a look at this, okay? Oh. So, I've been wearing this jumper for about the last half an hour and I'm no. sweating my nuts off. Already. No way! Hey. Hey. What a it. hero! Oh, that's your camera fingers there. Oh, Shut down brilliant. The Oh, I, I, that's the brilliant. Football was that was saved. the first one. Football was saved. Yeah. What a legend, give me that. <laughs> you, you know the story behind that. <laughs> Come on, tell us. Well, this no, is it's what just we're that is about. the protest that went on at Stamford yep. Bridge yep, yep. against the ESL. And I just got up there. And can we swear in here? For sure we can. And they, they started screaming, Come, Thog Dad, give us a song. And I just went, Fuck the ESL. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I don't know, it just got everyone going. And the moment football was saved, people talk about me as the guy who saved football. I Really, I'm the everyman. I'm you know the people everyone who went out there and protested against the ESL that's who saved football so this was the one sorry this quickly though this is one where Peter Cech where yeah, he yeah. came out and he was trying to calm the fans down and all that kind of stuff do you remember how weird a period was that by the way when they were trying to do oh. this European like, what that's do you just, think uh, what were the footballers thinking oh, we, we, it was outrageous we were hating it I, I yeah. was actually, WhatsApp group chat saying that so, no, we, we were we were away game who did we have I think we had someone like Norwich or something the next yeah. day and when they announced it it was the morning that we were travelling and everybody was talking about it as if to say nah no chance this, this won't happen and then it actually came out that they were yeah. going to be doing it. Like it was outrageous. I remember watching Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher on the telly at night, weren't they? And when they were speaking yeah. about it, yeah. And yeah. Gary Neville, to be fair, was just pff, wow, what a guy! Like spot he, on he was incredible, it. wasn't he? Yeah. He was absolutely spot on. But we we genuinely could not believe that they were going to try and do it. It was it would just ruin the very fabric of English football. It would completely mess up the pyramid, and it wouldn't be like we like we know what it is right now, would it? Absolutely. I was amazed by how Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, the manager of Man United, had no idea this was happening. He was asked about it in an interview, and the Glazers obviously just hadn't had the decency to discuss it with their manager. And for me, this all showed the disconnect between the yeah. money men, the billionaire owners, and the fans and the players and the people like us who just love football. Mm. And it's, I couldn't believe it, but I was, I was delighted to be on the picket lines there. That's where it is singing. The front line, on the front line. And the great thing was, we were there at Stamford Road when the announcement came through, club by club, that it would fall apart. Yeah, it all fall apart. I've never apart. seen yeah. such joy. It was like Bolton winning the league, honestly. Yeah, it was the enough. joy was Thankfully, incredible. Thankfully, it kind of collapsed as quickly as it sort of it like happened. Did, didn't it did, yeah. 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 It kind of, and they all kind of went away like dogs with their tails between their legs. It was like, yeah. but it was good to see that like people power actually matters and we can vote with our feet. Do you know what I mean? We went out to the street. You guys literally went out there and voted with your feet and it makes a difference people see it like the owners of these see the fans revolting it, it did its job didn't it absolutely you've got to speak up I mean I mean, we love, we just love football any football I mean obviously we're Bolton fans but you know we'll go along and watch Dulwich Hamlet or whoever it doesn't matter it, guys. Yeah. you know what I mean and yeah. I mean you've played I mean you played non-league back in the day didn't you so For sure yeah you, you know what it's like don't you, you know what Shout it's all about Racing Club Warwick by the way yeah Racing Club Warwick you played at Racing, Club, Club, Racing Warwick. Club Warwick in the Dr Martins Western League we were at the time we weren't even in the Dr Martins Premier League we were in the Dr Martins Western League we spoke about it yesterday actually we did another podcast £30 a week I was on when I first started. Brilliant. I didn't care though. I was I, 17 years old getting paid £30 a week. It was incredible. Honestly. Yeah, even back then, like that money was awesome. To it you. was massive. It paid for my Saturday night out. That's all yeah. it did. It paid for my Saturday night out. So guys, right, so in case for the for the viewers at home, for the listeners at home, for the people that don't know who Thogden and Thogdad are. Shame on you. <laughs> absolute shame on you. What have you been doing? Where what rock have you been living under? Come on. So basically, guys, tell us what it is that you do. We are football content creators. You know, obviously we cover content, Premier League, World Cup, Euros, whatever big competition's going on. We're both Bolton fans. We're originally from near Bolton. We now live in London. Yeah, we just cover everything football and we love it. And the channel's called Thogden. And yeah, we're mainly on YouTube as you as you guys are. Reviews, reactions, live streams. Everything, yeah. Everything and everything Watch-alongs. football. Brilliant. Yeah, we love it. So, yeah. so... The first question, which this is obviously a new series, new <laughs> podcast. So this is the question we are asking every single guest is top three people 
dead or alive. You don't take into consideration any hardship or drinking what, what problems, might have come up on or right? what yeah. they might have done Top in their three life. Three people, night out. Who are you going with? Wow, that is a good one. Well, I'll start off with one, and then you think of one, Theo. My first one, and this is football-related, I'm going with Frank Worthington. Ah, And that goes back to the 70s. So I was brought up really in the 70s on the terraces of Burnden Park, and one of my first heroes was Frank Worthington, who I think he played once or twice for England, should have played more, but he was just a crowd-pleaser. He was an entertainer. He was a well, he was a pisshead, you know. <laughs> there and, we go. Now and that's we're into what we it. want. And yeah. I've, you know, I've read his biography, and he's just you smile at his autobiography, yeah. and you just think, as well as being an amazing footballer, you'd have a great night out with him. So that's my first one, Theo. Gary Cahill. <laughs> you, you are going to have to explain this one Gaz I love Gaz Cahill by the way I saw him in Portugal a few weeks ago he's the loveliest man in yeah, the world because he's, he's a man top world. lad and he's a Bolton legend and he went on to win uh, yeah. a Champions League I mean True he was that. at the back with Ivanovic winning a Champions League left Bolton I'd love to hear about his stories and he also seems like a top top yeah. lad he is he's loves, lovely loves to, you know do you know what? I, I, I actually don't even know if Gaz drinks or not, to be honest with you, because he, really? like he is honestly yeah. the most consummate professional you've really? ever seen in your life. He is outrageously professional. I did not think like, that. I remember like, back in the day where we used to play for England, he'd be in the squad and stuff like that. He'd take his top off, and I would literally just be looking at him going, that's, that's incredible. Like, that's, <laughs> that is incredible. Shredded. I mean, yeah. absolutely shredded to bits. Yeah. So I don't know if he's going to be able to actually go out and get on the lash with you, but I like your thinking at yeah, least. Yeah. Yeah. That's a complete some story. That is some sort of a left field yeah. suggestion, though. Like, Everybody, some of the ones we've had, like Big Frank, the editor next to us here, Big Frank chose Russell Brand. And yeah, for me, w- it would be incredible. Like, I don't know if you know, you'd know where you are or where you're going to yeah. wake up or what you've done the night before, but it would be a good ride at least, wouldn't it? It yeah. would. I'd end up scrapping him, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my second one, I'm going to go totally left field. Away from sport, I'm going with Lawrence of Arabia. T.E. <laughs> Lawrence. I know, I know. And he was just a, a, a hero of mine. When you actually read about what he did, he was a, a war hero and an academic and a thinker. And... You go and see the film Lawrence of Arabia do, and that yeah. is a good and then he wrote this book Seven Pillars of Wisdom I'm going a bit academic here it's nice but so this guy sometimes. was yeah. an incredible incredible person and played an important part during the First World War my yeah. second choice <laughs> is you I love uh, this uh, what a guy. because I want to hear about your stories and That's I want to hear about that today for you've, sure. gone, you, you've played football with Ronaldo and, and now you're in smashing the YouTube world well, That's you're the first to do that That's the coolest thing I'd even, love to though, even though it's my podcast you have any questions just feel free dig in anywhere along the timeline and just ask any questions you want yeah. whether it's me Tom Rhino Fuck legs him. or big old Frankie boy next year yeah. okay I'll give you a story which he won't uh. tell you <laughs> are you allowed to that's tell that's all we love we might <laughs> need to cut this one out well, let's oh, see God's sake. so we always go on the lash um, to Cheltenham yeah, yeah, races yeah, yeah, yeah. every year we went for like years and years and years and it was like a bit of a lucky breeding ground for us we'd win a few quid and um, and the one time we've probably been on it like all day and then we go to this bar and um, normally we'll get to a point, Ben's pretty professional himself, so we'll get to a point and he'll go, right, I've kind of had enough, I'll get on the lemonades, bit of ice, the people think it's vodka lemonade. Yeah. But the one time, must have just been a bit giddy, he won a few on the horses, he's walked out, wasn't very well, um, shall we say. And some bloke, do you remember this? Yeah. yeah. Some bloke, he said, and I'll never forget it because it made you feel like crap, and he said, some bloke walked past him and said, you wouldn't see Robin Van Persie doing that. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. Oh, that is super. I was pretty much bent over being sick in a bush, though, outside <laughs> oh, the pub, to be fair. <laughs> and I don't think you would have seen Robin Van Persie doing that. But, you know, he's still the one. You know, I was having a nice time. It was exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. That's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah. We've all done it. We've that is all what it's all it. about. And yeah. final one. I'm going to go academic again. I'm going back hundreds of years. Leonardo da Vinci. All right. Oh, You'll probably know he painted the Mona Lisa. Painter. Amazing painter. But he was also, he basically invented the helicopter. Hundreds of years years Incredible. before it became a helicopter he was just a scientist a poet a, a writer a thinker just one of the brains of all time and I, I admire people who go from one thing to another and we we were talking earlier about how you're transitioning from a footballer to a youtuber you know i've gone from a businessman to a youtuber it's quite hard isn't it to go from one thing to another and da vinci was someone who just did the lot absolutely everything. hundreds of years ago 
Mm. Anyone else? You got two? Two's fine. Honestly, you've given us one more than what Spencer and Seb gave us yesterday in their podcast, honestly. So yeah. you're doing well. Fog Dad's absolutely rescued it there, to be fair. Getting three. <laughs> I've got a few options. I, I, I can't. I think you'd have to get a pundit in there because I'd love to speak to a pundit in person. Roy yeah. Keane. What about Roy Keane? Oh, I think Roy Keane should have been one of your options because okay. I'm thinking more. I'm thinking more Gary Neville. I just think it'd be funny to see what he thinks, have a conversation oh, with him. But first. Theo, you met Gary Neville. Tell that story. Well, that's the thing. I'd, I'd, I'd bring up that conversation. Go on, tell us. Well, Gary Neville, I was at Chelsea game once and um, he's he was he had to get from one place at the stadium to another in time for the shoot time. It was at full time. So they had to get to his, he was about to go live. He had to run around the stadium. Anyway, he was taking a few photos. I asked him, I put the camera in his face. So I was like, oh, give us one word for that performance. United had just beaten Chelsea 2-0 away from home. Bruno and Maguire. And it was Bruno's first game. He must have been delighted, I was thinking. He'd just say brilliant or something, move on. He said, uh, no, sorry, can't do this. If you want a photo, we'll have it. I was like... He's like, we're not doing this. Not doing that, not doing that. As if Theo had ambushed him. He's asking for one word. Yeah. And he responded with Gaza. 20 words. I know, oh, shocking. No, I so know. I, I want to I I get him for a few drinks and ex- ask him why he's done yeah. that. Take him down the alley. Oh, yeah, yeah down, it's not be like, is it? Yeah. You just, know what? Uh, it's, just, it's just like... I, I've watched so much of him as I because I love watching you know Sky Sports and stuff. I love keeping up with the football, especially over everything that's gone over the last few months. So when I had the chance to maybe have one word from him, it didn't happen. Just like but. your five minutes of fame, you know, guys, like yeah. that one little moment kind of thing. Yeah, but he was on he was on the move. He had to go live for it pretty quick, so he just wanted to get photos and get out of the way. But it's still a shame. It is a shame. Never meet your heroes. Never. No, meet you your know heroes. what? I'd say Kevin Davis. Kevin Davis. Yeah. This is real close. I'm gonna yeah. ma- I was going to mention Kevin Davis later, actually. But go on, tell me about Kevin Davis. He's just I a think Bolton legend. Class. I can yeah. have so many comments. I mean, we went out to, to Madrid away when Bolton were playing in Europe. Atletico Madrid, we beat them. He was up top for yeah, us. Yeah. He was playing. He's been. He's seen teams with uh, amazing Bolton teams go away in Europe and see us go down the leagues. He's always a Bolton legend. You know, I'd loved. I'd, I'd ask him so many questions about everything. Really, Kevin Davis is one of these that strikes me as you know that one person when you go out or something, and it's like there's no warning for it. And I imagine Kevin Davis would be someone upsets him, and then it's just good night. It comes out, yeah, 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 Kevin yeah, Davis yeah, yeah. chucking the elbows yeah. around. Like, yeah. I bet he was an absolute animal. Hundred percent. He's a nice guy, him. You know, he was in really? the England squid for, squad for a while. And yeah. honestly, what a lovely, lovely bloke. Like he played one cap, didn't he? One cap he got, but he was yeah. honest as a bloke though. Top class, honestly, absolutely top class. Yeah, mm. it's um, funny that his one cap. I was uh, I was in Istanbul that day, and I had to watch the game. And I found this massive pub that was showing the, the England game, and I went in there. And there's one bloke in there, an English lad, and I sort of shook his hand and said, oh, "I'm Steve, and I've come to watch Kevin you, Davis." Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "I'm Frank. I've come here for exactly the same thing." <laughs> a lad from Bolton, and we watched Brilliant. his one appearance. Small yeah. world, but it? Kevin Davis, an absolute Bolton legend, the most fouled and the most fouling yeah, player yeah, in yeah, the sure. Premiership. He never, he never lost. Any challenges in the air? I mean, like I, said, I'll talk, I'll talk, I was going to mention Kevin Davis later anyway because I've got a, a bit yeah. of a funny story about him and Bolton in general. But it's, it's a it's a golden one quickly though because that was Tom's like question choice. Yeah, and I love that question choice. It's absolutely well clear. My one was always like, "What is your favourite film?" Because we spoke about this yesterday, and he's always says to me, "Don't ask this question because what if they come back with a question with an answer like uh, Gladiator or something that's really sad?" <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? What, can like, I, can like, I name where do you go? Where do you go from there? Do you know what I mean? Sort of thing. Yeah. What's your favourite movie of all time? My favourite movie is The Godfather. There you Part go. Boom. One. Perfect. And yeah. you okay. just, just a brilliant just, gangster yeah, yeah, film yeah. in it. Theo, come on. Wolf of Wall Street. Boom. Oh, yeah. Love it. Yeah. See, there you go. When, now can watch when that you every get time. that. Brilliant. When you get an answer like that, Wolf of Wall Street, for example. The only mate. thing yeah. is with that, it's so long. I've seen the first hour about 20 times. Yeah, yeah that's so true. Yeah. Halfway yeah. through. Yeah. yeah. But he, he goes around the apartment just quoting that film nonstop. Yeah. Don't you I love it. No, you can watch it every time it feels like the first. And that's Malcolm Robbie film. as well. Yeah, oh, exactly. Wow, exactly. we. Well, we okay, right? Let's take it way back. Let's take it way, way back to the very, very start of the channel when you very first started getting into this whole kind of YouTube world, actually putting your videos out there. How old were you at the time when you first started doing it? 10, 11. 11? Wow. Do you know? I think no, I was 12. I think you were 12 or 13 12 or when 13. you first started the, the channel, and he came out into the corridor and he's like, Dad, I've just set up a YouTube channel. Uh oh. And I'm like, uh, What's that? Because <laughs> I, yeah. I, I watched YouTube, but I had no idea this concept that people created. That yeah. might sound like a stupid idea. Because back in the day, you turn on the BBC, the ITV, and that's what I was used to. So I had to ask Theo, well, what do you mean? What? I'm a creator. Yeah. So seven years ago... You, I mean, at the start, you, you barely understood it. And yeah. I only knew it because I grew up watching it. And I, that's the benefit. That's the reason I started the channel. I loved it. 
Um, and I was quite lucky to go to a school at the time where like people just but actually supported me. My mate supported me with my channel. It was like the first time I had an audience. It was built up from friends and family that supported me. And then I started to gain a bit of an audience from YouTube. But it's very hard to break that first barrier. For sure. I was just very lucky to start in an age where it wasn't a completely saturated market. Now it's ridiculous. But when you first, we were looking at obviously your videos and, and whatnot, like yeah. your very first few videos, it does take a certain ability to stand with a camera on your own. It does, yeah. And just bash out a bit of content because at that age, you, you clearly, you knew what, you, you were good. Mm. You kind of, it was quite easy to watch even back then. I know you've done reaction videos to like your first ever video. Yeah, but even <laughs> they then, are yeah. wicked. Them. We were watching something like last <laughs> night and like, I've always watched your videos anyway, so I've always stumbled across them. But like the fresh face, like baby Thugden, I, I love know, it. It's, it's so good, yeah. isn't it? It's, but, uh, it? That just shows I've just been through yeah. my whole life with YouTube. But you as, know? A, as a, like a 12, 13 year old, 14 yeah. year old lad making content, yeah, because I've seen some of like your Q and A's and stuff. We yeah. were talking about yeah, this morning. Yeah, yeah. And some people were quite, quite pokey and some quite nasty comments and stuff, which you'd expect. Yeah. But at 13 and 14, you have to develop a pretty thick skin because you that do. must have put you off. 100%. That trains you up. I think the reason I'm, I'm so good at handling it now, if something, you know, if you get some hate or, or, you know, it goes both ways, doesn't it, with YouTube? You can get love, you can get hate. But I have built up a thick skin from years and years of, of people trying to find little things to try and pull you down. Because that's just that's just nature yeah, of, sure. of how it is on, on social media. So I mean, I actually think, so we moved down from Manchester. Theo was brought, born in North Yorkshire, brought up in Manchester, Altrincham. And I think if we'd stayed there, and if Theo had gone to a state school in Manchester or Bolton, I think you would have been bullied out of doing a YouTube channel. Yeah, and that was a terrible thing to, London, to say. Yeah. We moved to London, went to a different sort of school, and luckily, the kids around him, the teachers around him, were encouraging. Yeah, brilliant. I've met youngsters who started channels and just admit to me, yeah, I started to do it, but I was bullied out of it. And I think that's one of the saddest things. Yeah, it happens loads, even now. It's just, it depends on the people around you. I was very lucky to be, to be, and I'm still with the same group of friends that I made in school. And that's just a good sign. And they've always yeah, supported sure. me from the get go. Like they literally, there was a time I hadn't posted in four months. And they were like, oh, get your, like, get your act together, like post again. So they pushed me to it. And they're still my closest mates today, even though I've, I've left school and you know, they're all at uni, that we, we all still stay in touch. And that just shows. I was very lucky. I, th I don't think I'd be where I am today if it wasn't for our friends. Yeah, exactly. And Fog Dad. I think that, well, yeah. that, honestly, one of our questions was like, what was the reaction sort of in yeah. when you were at school in doing this? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. that, that sort of, that, them ages as well, like 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 even, when you were at so school. Tough. Do you know what I mean? And you've, yeah. you've got a little bit of a platform and people can get at you on the internet they can get at you in school it's difficult I say it every day in football do you know mm. what I mean I, like the, yeah. I know that on a Saturday afternoon regardless of how I've played or if we've won or if we drew or if we lost somebody somewhere is going to be upset you know what I mean uh, so if we uh, just yeah, beat the team up. Every somebody is going to give me abuse and say uh, you're a, this that whatever and people say how do you deal with that and I, I know for sure that when I was younger even in my 20s, honestly, it really used to get to me and it would affect me. Mm. But then as I got older, sort of when you, I think once you start having kids, you know, you get to sort of your late 20s, 30s, that kind of thing, you just think, actually, I just start to feel a bit sorry for these kind of guys. Yeah. If this is the only way they can get their angst out or yeah. their anger sort of thing, and this is the only thing that they can focus on, then you should probably just feel sorry for these guys. You know what I mean? I mm. think 99% is based on jealousy, isn't yeah. it? And it is a vocal minority and almost never do you meet them in real life. No. And when they almost do, they're like, never. oh, can you unblock me? Can you do this yeah. for me? Yeah. Do that? Yeah. They don't actually care. They just want a bit of attention when they tweet you. Of that's course. the truth of it. Yeah. They, when they see you, they're back to being a fan. Yeah. It's validation. Yeah. It's just a bit of validation, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. You've, yes. worked, you've worked, like, obviously, you've, you've kind of come up from a young age with YouTube, but you've grafted at it, haven't you? Like, yeah. It, like, just scrolling through all your videos, you have made a lot of videos. And Definitely. even, like, now, with the streams, yeah. you're banging out content every day. Yeah, we're trying our best. We're trying our best because the one thing you can't do is slack. Like, even if you build up 600,000 subscribers, we're still thinking... I, I, I feel like I haven't maximised the Euro 22. I feel like I've messed out. Like, I feel like I messed up. I felt no I genuinely believe like that we in the build up to the Euros we could have done a better job I still look at it every day today and think Brilliant. we've got yeah. to find a way to get be be better like I I've, I, used to, I look back and, and think 
you've got to maximize every single opportunity because that's how we built the channel. There was never one big shout out to get us there. It was through graft and posting every day of different content, using tags, getting people to click on it. And it's going to stay the same way until we get to a million subscribers. And that's just the mentality we've got on this channel. Yeah, it's it's all about hard work. Theo yeah. wakes up in the morning, we have a coffee. He's like, right, dad, what are we doing today? Yeah. How are we going to push this channel forward today? Sometimes he might not be up for it. And you know, I can understand that with his age, but I, I'm trying <laughs> to convince him sometimes half the day, like, oh, the, please dad, just do this video. Like, give yeah. you know, honestly, Ryan, right? So, so you're how old are you? Twenty, twenty. Yeah. There. So the 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 like I say we I said earlier on in the pod that we we had a, we did another podcast podcast yesterday afternoon with um, Spencer and Seb, didn't we? From hashtag and the one thing that you could just tell is from them when they first started their channel is the work that they had yeah. to put in the dedication the literally daily 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 to one point where Spencer actually said like. I, it was actually a bit of a problem. Back in the day, he says, I would push myself so hard. And he said, if I missed a day where I didn't post, it would be like the end of the world kind of yeah. thing. It's like I'd fall yeah. off. Yeah. It's like I'd fall off the end of the world kind of thing. He yeah. says, and as he's got older, he's learned how to do But the one thing for me is, and you, you can just tell you guys straight away, you're just workers, you're grafters, and you enjoy yeah. doing it. And I think yeah. that when you enjoy doing it as well, it never ever fully seems like work, does it? No, it's true. Yeah, That's why we love it. And you can't maintain something for six years if it's not no fun. No chance. Like, we love it. That's why it's fun. That's why we continue it. Even, like, with your research side, I mean... Yeah. We were talking... It, Hawksby, yeah. Hawksby and Jacobs, actually, on TalkSport, and they were like, we watch a lot of football. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. watch yeah. a lot of football. And they're like, well, football. it's kind of our job, but still, we watch a lot and of yeah. we make notes. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I just thought, yeah, that's interesting, because you need to know. You need to know your onions, don't you, when you're talking about... Russia and Croatia certain players, and, certain uh, players, yeah. To know what you're on about. When we do the live streams, I, I've got my iPad. I'll do two hours of research into the 22 players who will almost certainly start, and I've got that written there by the side. Theo's more, you know, you know them all from FIFA, don't you? From playing the, the yeah, game, yeah, I know yeah. them from watching You've football. Got, but do you know what? When I watch some of the mainstream channels, I won't mention names, but there's occasionally the commentators just completely getting their facts wrong. Oh, please and mention the names. And yeah. <laughs> I, I won't. I won't. We'll come on to YouTube beef later. Don't okay. mention any names now. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but quite prominent people who are in the game, occasionally they just get something wrong. Yeah. Even if it's just a pronunciation, I'm thinking, you've not done your homework. Yeah, I love it. You've turned up to this. You know, mm. you're on your BT Sport or whatever. Uh, I just made that up. <laughs> no, you didn't. Uh, uh, <laughs> you said, you didn't. I think it's he a BT it. Sport presenter, guys. Yeah. I don't know who it is, We're but it's a BT down. Sport guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, you've got to do your homework. And the main point is, any kids listening, there's, there's no substitute for hard graft. I mean, yeah. you know yeah. that from being yeah, a football. Yeah, for sure, yeah. If you didn't go to training X hours a day, for 20, 30 years, yep. you wouldn't be at the top of your game. Well, when you've got, like say, my son's 11 years old, I've got a daughter who's 12 years old, and they both want, like my daughter, she's really good at netball, she's 12 years old, my son's really good at football, he's 11 years old, and I'm, they're like, they're watching videos of how to do this, and I'm like, but you have to get outside, you yeah. have to practice it. It's mm. literally like, if you want to be better at maths, you practice, you yeah. revise, you work it, you do it. If you want to be better at football, you get out there and you do it. You pra It's all about just relentlessly going for it. That's, what, that's what life's about. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. so so but for now then, so for example, so when you go so you've been doing some some like your Euro, Euro leagues, Euro sorry, um match day vlogs at the minute kind of thing. Yeah. What is so when the Thogdens and the Thog Dads go out, what's the reaction like? What is everybody like with you? If you walk into a pub for example. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Like even even if we go into a pub not for the football and we're just there, I'm with my mates in like Islington at a pub, we'll get recognised by a bunch of like Arsenal fans or Tottenham or whatever and it's just great because everyone's so nice everyone's so nice when we, when we go with Thog Dad to football games on the way in like so many people stop <laughs> us it we, kicked off a bit outside when we okay. the games so we're waiting to get into the England Scotland we got our tickets and our Covid tests and there was a bunch of England fans Scotland fans young lads suddenly they noticed Thogden and Thog Dad I got surrounded by, by these kids all singing no Thog Dad no party and all with, all, all with their cameras, they all want the selfies. But it was like, honestly, 30 or 40 at once. And suddenly I, f I felt I'm being pulled away. I People thought, oh, grabbing you. Old Bill had grabbed me. No. <laughs> old Bill, and there were like three of them surrounding me. They're like, sir, can we just have a quiet word? And then they were asked, who the hell are you? <laughs> uh, but no, they, they, because suddenly this crowd had gone mad for Thogged, and you'd been pulled aside. Mm. And that's the most extreme it's ever been. And and then the police just that said, was England Scotland though that's when everyone yeah. was a bit high and the, yeah, and the old Bill yeah. just said you better go in because yeah. it's you're actually inciting them a little bit it's, but, but it's no I'll tell you a second so, <laughs> so Thog Dad and Thogden incited a riot 
At the England at Scotland the England game. game, yeah. Pretty yeah. much. I'm not even kidding. We've got those some clips in our on, on my Instagram. <laughs> yeah. The other the other story, and this is a kind of a sad but funny story in a way. You'll see it. Um, sadly, a friend of mine died three three years ago, and um, he has a young a, a daughter about 13, 14, went to the funeral in Putney. And I could see, as soon as I went to the church, I thought, I've been spotted by the daughter's friends, you know, and it, we went to the wake. And you could see, they've all got their cameras ready. And, yeah. said, and I asked the, um, the widow, I said, look, I explained what's happening. And they said, go on, you know, Paolo, who died, would find it hilarious that you've been spotted <laughs> yeah. and you've been stopped for by selfies. By these teenage girls and teenage uh, kids. Teenage boys and girls at the <laughs> funeral. And it was like, that was the one situation where I thought, what is the protocol here? And there's no rule book. There's no rule book, is there? So, so this is this is a good thing that I'm going to lead on to here, actually, because I think uh, when you're like a bit of a footballer or you're a bit of a name or a bit of a celebrity or whatever you are, kind of thing, having kids myself, I see the effect that if they get the chance to meet one of their idols, like a footballer, whoever it is, it's a massive thing, isn't it? It's a massive yeah. thing. So it's the sort of thing that they will remember for the rest of their lives. So yeah. my, my kids, when they were younger, like only two, two, three years ago sort of thing, they used to love wrestling, right? Like yeah. WWE, they would love wrestling. And there was this one time we got some tickets to, uh, I think it was in Nottingham or something like that. We got like these really lovely like backstage passes. We got to go and meet some of the wrestlers. And honestly, these wrestlers were unbelievable I know they're kind of like actors anyway and they're in that world but my gosh we went backstage right and they've got like this big old area they've got like a food truck they've got like a chill area all that kind of stuff they literally nobody had to say we've got people come in like you know put put the put the act on they bowled over to us like quick as you like literally whisked the kids off us who's your favourite wrestler come and meet him and they, like yeah. the big show was there and he was like fist pumping them all like got some photos yeah. they, honestly they literally took the kids off us and went and did it for it was like yeah. and we're watching that and like my son and daughter are just like oh, this is incredible and so I'll always say to the young kids at football like if you get the chance to just make their day it's, it, it takes you 10 seconds like smile Say hello, ask a question. Who's your favourite player? Who's your favourite team? That kind of thing. Yeah. Because it leaves such a lasting impression, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, it does. And another funny one, I was, in my, I was in my car the other day at a red light. There's a car in front. Driver gets an Audi. Guy in his 20s gets out, walks over to my driver's side. I'm thinking, oh, this is a road rage thing going on. <laughs> he's like, fist bumps me. Thog dad. That's, That's all he says. That's all he says. He gets back in his Audi and he drives off. <laughs> That's the sort of at stuff a red light, and and you know, for me, I never thought this nonsense would ever happen to me. I'm just you know a middle-aged bloke who likes a beer and a game of footy, you know. Yeah. But it it really has become big in the last couple of years. Yeah. Very big in we're very big in Scotland really? to a point yes. where like he stopped off in a small village. We're taking my daughter up to her uni, Edinburgh, up in Edinburgh, and I go for a small village. All the school kids stop the car, like yeah. go get uh, Thog Dad. Everyone just loves him. For some but reason. it's amazing though, Thog Dad, because it's like. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> like I've been like stalking your LinkedIn yeah, profile, yeah. and like I think it's fair to say you've had some pretty punchy like job roles and yeah. like, board level roles in, yes. in the past. And like like you say, you're 53. Yes, 53. You're now a content creator, YouTuber. You know, YouTuber. Theo's 20, hmm. and you know you're in a world of teenage and 20s. Yeah. And, you know, Fozzie started, and he's you know, 38. Yes, yes. So, like, how's that dynamic for you? It, it's weird. You, ha you just have to be sort of dynamic and adaptable and, and pragmatic. Yeah, so back in the day, I mean, my best role, I was executive chairman of a, a Russian retailer with 10,000 employees, you know, so got to quite a reasonable level in business. And But it wasn't something I wanted to do forever. So, obviously, the Thog Dad thing is created and driven by Thogden. Yeah. It was never going to happen unless it, it, yes, the channel. Yes, it wasn't something I was going to go out and look for. You never thought about that? Like no, when you're I working didn't. as director, you thought that's what you'd be doing for the rest of your life? Yeah. Uh, back in the day, I've always liked uh, writing. So that was my form. When I was uh, 15, 16, I thought I'm going to be a writer or a journalist. So there was that seed of creativity. Um, but to be kind of living this kind of this other form of creativity, it's brilliant. Mm. And you just roll with it. And it, you, like I said, there's no rule book. You just learn day in, day out how to, how yeah. to be Thog Dad. And Thogdon, are we going to see Thog Mum, Thog Sis, 
thug girlfriend at some point. Who knows? <laughs> who knows what the future holds? I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow. That's just how YouTube is. I want to want to. I want to watch a watch along with Thug Mum. All right. I want to yeah, see. Yeah, but thug she's mum. useless on the camera. No, it's, it's, like, it's gold it's just though. Us two. It's yeah. just us two. Usually, like when I try to get someone else in, we we'll, we sometimes have our, our mate Ben who joins the streams. If you joined yesterday, you would have seen. Yeah, but yeah. I'm I'm so, so I know yeah. the guy you're on about. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he yeah, always yeah. joins the streams, yeah. like because he lives in London now, so we always get him involved. But Thug Mum would be impossible to get anything out of her. Thog sis, maybe, but then she's at uni doing her own stuff. I think people want to see that kind of stuff. You the, the normal you'll, you'll person. You'll start a family channel soon enough. I, I, I don't know about a family channel, Why but not? for sure, my son, I, I might get him involved in a few bits and bobs. Like, we, we, just yeah. while you're talking about the watch alongs, we, so we've done a two now. We've done the last two England games. By the way, the first one we did was the Scotland game. It was. Honestly, it was, it's a yeah. miracle we were actually awake yeah. watching the game. It yeah. was it was it was oh, hard yeah. work. It was yeah. hard work, but it was fine. So we've got the kids in the background, haven't we? Everybody, oh, they're, nice. all, they're all running amok, having a lovely time, sort of going, "Dad, this is miserable. This is miserable." I, I popped off to the toilet. Um, Louis sort of bowls in, didn't he? And when um, Bo, as he was doing it, was like, uh, "Louis, tell us what you think of the game." He's went, "It's a bit boring, really, isn't yeah. it?" Yeah. But it yeah. was. But yeah. so so I'm a big fan of your watch along. So me and Louis, like I said to you earlier, didn't I? Like we, you know this anyway. But we always watch your watch alongs. They are well. Class, oh, that yeah. is like, nice the, to the hear. stuff that you do, it's just so enjoyable, honestly. It's so, and I think, but like I say, I'm, I'm so happy for my son watching it for as an 11 year old, and yeah. that for me is a big thing. Somebody yeah. I know I can trust him watching them is absolutely brilliant, and I think that is key. Um, because what we put out there is very positive stuff. I know I, I'll have a beer, and occasionally there'll be a swear word, but on the whole, it's, it's quite yeah, wholesome, it's good, isn't it? yeah. yeah, and it's very, very positive 99% of the time. And a lot of stuff that's out there, creative stuff, it, it it's, I don't know, very negative for me. So yeah, you asked about Thogmum. Now Thogmum is, um, she's a PhD in philosophy and, and a couple of days ago, we got back from the England game, Czech Republic uh, at Wembley. We walk in with smiles on our faces and Thogmum's like, why are you smiling? You've, you've just lost 3-1 to Croatia. And she thought, and this is where she is, she thought we'd been to the Scotland game to support Scotland. So Thog Mum will never, she's got no interest in football yeah, and never. The, the vlogs. Thog Sis is a very interesting one. She's at Edinburgh University. She hates to be referred to as Thog Sis. Yeah. Because she's like, I'm an independent woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah. do my own thing. Yeah. So sadly, I think the whole family thing, I mean, there's a few Thog uncles who love being in it. Oh, yeah, they? no, like we, your, your brother, massive Leeds fan, we always go to Bolton games with him. Like, he loves it. Just the day out, you know, with, yeah. with my cousin as well. So like, yeah, we do that sort of stuff. We get family involved. But I think going forward, we're just gonna look for other people. Yeah. Just, you know, just other YouTubers, just to like for collaborate sure. with like you guys, you know? But yeah. on the subject of family, I mean, I think a lot of people like our, our YouTube stuff for the family dynamic. Yeah. They love the father and son thing. Because I think that that's fairly unique. There aren't really other YouTubers who do a kind of family something and we that, got a, a, a really big following that's one of the things i was going to ask yeah. honestly, is how nice is that the fact that you get it's, to work with your son like this it, you're waking up and you can tell you obviously get on really well anyway. yeah you can yeah, tell yeah. Like, I, I met you we were talking in our we have got an office upstairs guys by the way and we had like half an hour didn't we yeah. before we came down here and um, we were just chatting gump it was it yeah. was yeah. but you can just yeah. tell that you get on really well anyway you, yeah. you've got to yeah. because especially when we do some of the away days i mean one example we went up to scotland for five days well four games in four days you know nice. Thursday we're at Rangers in a European game then we're up for the Dundee derby which was amazing then we went to St Johnson and on the Sunday we went to Celtic but you're living out, out of each other's pockets for four days yeah and um, so you've got to get on you've got to be mates you've got to banter yeah, and I think you know, that's it if you can be mates you've, you've smashed it it's yeah. gold isn't if, it if like with YouTube so I'm sure the channel will have massive longevity but if in like say 10-15 years things do change and evolve which they obviously will We've got two 11 year old boys, haven't we? And like we've said, imagine doing the stuff that you two do together with like with our sons traveling Europe and going, what a dream. Mm. Yeah. It's just brilliant. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. And and for us, really, it's all about the away days. We love the travel. Yeah. In some way, we're going to football, like just, just derby days around Europe, father and son covering the content. Amazing. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You think, do you know what? That's. I think as a footballer, like, don't get me wrong, I'll never ever change what I've done. I love my like my job is absolutely incredible. But I, I've never been able to do like an away day with my son. But now because he's getting to the age of like 11, 12, like he's getting older, he's getting towards a teenager kind of thing. 
I know for a fact that in a couple of years' time when I'm retired, I'm going to be able to go to away days with my son, yeah. with Louis, with my daughter, Olivia, and we're going to do it properly. We'll go, you know what I mean? If it's really far away, we'll stay in a hotel or something. Because I think yeah. my team will always be West Brom. So yeah. we, we, like, obviously I was, I was at West Brom for seven, eight years, and yeah. they will always be our team. The kids grew up to be West Brom fans, and I'd love to be able to do that, is go away, do it, and like, when he's out 18, get a few beers down him, all that kind of but stuff. That's the dynamic, isn't it? You've played in these big games over the years, and like me and Ben, we've got some like mates that we've been friends with since we were like really young and Ben's got a you know big family and those big games we've all experienced as fans and like we've been on a coach to Wrexham when they won the cup final Blues when they won the cup final and like mm. so we've had these days out as Watford fans Watford Leeds uh, promotion Watford Leeds promotion and we're like yeah. you know on the beers having a brilliant day out and he's not he obviously he's playing but he's not been able to do that so it would be quite cool won't it yeah, like it that we get cool. to take the lads and, and even as we come out of Covid like next season I'll be able to take our boys and, and live if she wants to come and like even like before the game like come and see you behind the goal and it, it just um it's yeah, great when it. they get to that age, isn't it? Yeah. It's brilliant. I mean, we've had some amazing England away days, you know, Czech Republic, Bulgaria, and the Russia World Cup, oh. which was, we went <laughs> out there for a, a month, and it was really trains, planes, and automobiles. I mean, it was <laughs> staying in Airbnbs. It wasn't just all posh hotels, but every minute of that was just that's amazing. The, that's half right? the joy, though, isn't it? Getting to do that, doing yeah. it properly as well. Like, So you don't need it all singing or dancing. You want to experience that side of it as well. That adds yeah. to the beauty of it all, it doesn't does. it? We, I mean, in Russia, we just stayed wherever we could stay. I mean, it was so busy for the World Cup because that was the last big tournament where yeah. the fans were actually there until all the restrictions COVID hit, right? So... It was it was incredible experience. You I know, mean, the England fans were were told not to go. Yeah, I remember because of the trouble. Everyone was anticipating there's going to be so much trouble, and it went off without a hitch, yeah. didn't it? It was it, absolutely incredible. Was they put on an fun. amazing tournament. They put on a great show for us, and we were there to document it. And it was so nice to show people back in England that actually this country that welcomed us with open arms. We got to the semi final. We went on a run. We got to loads of different cities across Russia. Belton tried local. Because in everything, we just loved it. I so, love it, Les. So, Theo, then, so with the away days, then, what, and you say about you know, derbies and stuff, what's the big kind of, if you haven't ticked it off already, what's your big one you want to go to? I want to do Boca Juniors River Plate. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I've never good. done that. I'd love to do that. It just seems so like it's all about the fans. Yeah. You know what I mean? All about the fans. Yeah, they, it looks like they, you know, like in this country, you get some people who are just reserved, aren't you? And they're not going to go crazy. And when the goal goes in, they might just sort of go, yeah, I'll go buzzing. Yeah. They look like they are on it 24-7. Yeah. Like they yeah. cannot control their emotions, but every single one of them as well. And when you get a lot of people together like that, it just feeds into it. God, and it would be batshit crazy. But I agree, Absolutely. I'm with you. That would be for me one of the ones that I would want to go and experience just for, oh, it would be We'll amazing, go together. We'll sort out. There when we, we go. can all go. I think we do we'll a match out. day, away day, match day vlog oh. for the Boca Juniors Argentina derby. Away. Oh. I'll tell you what, there's another one. There's a loads of, oh, first of all, um, Zamalek against Al Ali in Egypt. Yeah, I know that nice. sounds mad, but these are the, like <laughs> two of the most massive teams yeah, they are. in Egypt. And that derby's meant to be mad. Absolutely mad. <laughs> but then closer to home, the old firm derby. We've oh, not been yeah. to that yeah. yet. Yeah. That's top it's one of the top three or four in the world, it has to be, doesn't it? I've got to say, I, I played in a I played in a Celtic Man U game once up at Celtic. So when I is when I was at Man United it was in the Champions League, we ended we drew the game one all. Um I definitely should have saved the goal. But don't worry about the goal, right? <laughs> but um, so it finished one all, but the atmosphere at Celtic Park <sighs> I have to say it's the best atmosphere I've ever played in my life. Did it get in your head? It got in my head like you would not believe that. Really? Honestly, I was crapping myself all the way through the game. Like I think I was about 20, five or six at the time, right? right? Yeah. It got in my head like you wouldn't believe. I remember the, the noise is like nothing I'd ever heard before. Honestly, nothing. Yeah. Like, and yeah. like when, when they're attacking, their fans suck the ball into the goal. Mm. I'm not even joking. They suck the ball into the back of the goal. I, yeah. uh, there's another goalie coach I know, Graham Stack, and he said he because he used to play for like Kilmarnock, Hibs, all that sort of thing up there. And he used to say that when we used to play away at Celtic, he said Ben they would suck the ball in the back of the net. He said yeah. obviously they was he said if it was we were one nil up or one all or whatever, and they wanted to score a goal, it would go in the back of the net because they would suck it in. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? It, it Fans is. Makes such a difference. I mean, the story about us and Scottish football. We went to see uh, Celtic against Zenit St Petersburg in uh, was it the UA for? Yeah, I think it was the UA for Europa League, yeah. and. The reason being, Theo's half Russian and Zenit is our foreign team. So we did this 20-minute film about, about you know, Celtic Zenit. And all the Celtic fans were writing to us saying, you've got to come back. Got to come back and watch Celtic. Mm. Um, and at first we were, we were nervous. We'd been warned off Celtic and Rangers because of, you know, 
yeah, yeah, perceived yeah, problems yeah, sure. or what have you. But we started going to Celtic games, and, and the reception we got, and we, we were in some right rough pubs beforehand, yeah. witnessed some, you know, some interesting songs, shall we say, you know, <laughs> all about the Queen and other things, you know. Um, but the reception we got was absolutely incredible. The friendliest people. Then, of course, the Rangers fans started writing to us and saying, what are you doing that side of town? You've got to come and see us. So then we started going to Rangers games, and then we started going to Hearts side, games, yeah. Hips games, yeah. and it just happened, didn't it, Theo? We- no, nah, Scottish football is great. I think a lot of people underestimate how good, especially like from a fan's perspective, and the fact that we opened that, or like that niche of content, uh, it was incredible. It was something different. Like we, we go into Bolton games, we've been doing like Europe, but giving Scotland a fan was great because now everyone's watching the Scotland England vlogs and stuff because we yeah, went to that last sure. week. And I tell you what, yeah. like I've said to you, haven't because you've not been, but. Like Edinburgh and Glasgow are two of the best cities in Europe, in my For opinion. For a night, as well, yeah. Just yeah. food, like every Glasgow's that bit edgier, isn't it? Yes. But it's like incredible restaurants. Yep. Um, Edinburgh very different, but but beautiful. Like two brilliant, brilliant cities. Glasgow's so real. Like the people there are so real. They're all yeah. they're all football mad. Yeah. Edinburgh's a bit nicer, but you still, you still, yeah, I love Scotland. It's great. And what we found there was a, like a vacuum of content. There were almost no Scottish YouTubers. There yeah. were a few yeah. very small scale. These two mad English lads come in and start vlogging about Celtic Rangers, and it was people were just like thank you. And the people up there are just amazing. Yeah, they love a drink, they love a laugh, they love the crack. They just love life, and that's they like, love for me, life. That's the whole point of it. And yeah. you know, we went, for example, to the Dundee derby. It was one of the most enjoyable games of, of my life. Not not for the ninety minutes of football, but for the pubs beforehand yeah. and the reception we got and the songs and yeah. the, and the laugh and. Uh, and it was just really, we showed that Scottish football, a little bit of respect, gave it a little bit of time, yeah. and it, it's, we've been paid back in spades. I mean, this is the beauty of football, guys, isn't it? Like, this yeah. is what it does. Like, this is why people literally live their life for the weekend for football. And, like, in, sometimes in football, you're in the bubble where you don't really see that because you don't get to experience yourself. But when you talk to people like you, you talk to the fans, you see how much it means to them. Like, you can understand it, can't you? It it's is absolutely yeah. belting. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, it's not for the football. Yeah. Like you said, it's a social, it's an event, yeah, isn't yeah. it? No yeah. matter what it is. It really you is. went to Barcelona or, or wherever and you go yeah. and the weekend around it and it's like, it's just brilliant, isn't it? It so is. So true. So true. Guys, yeah. tell me, sorry, quickly, what is, what's the biggest thing you think that's helped you in YouTube so far? Is there one video? Is there one event? Is there something? Or do you just put it down to solid grinding? Oh, it's, it's difficult to put it down to one video because I feel like other YouTubers have had that more. One thing, yeah. That one thing. But I would say for me, I mean, that Leicester City vlog where at Chelsea Spurs, yeah. when Leicester won the league. I remember filming that and it, it was like one of my first, one of my earliest videos that just went big yeah, yeah. with views and stuff and, and YouTube pushed it. And that was like such an early stage of when people were going to games and, and filming about it. And it was just like limbs at Chelsea. Everyone was so happy that Leicester had won it because it stopped Spurs right there. The, when Eden Hazard scored the second, yeah. it was incredible around me and everyone was going mad. And one of my best mates, Chelsea, so he brought me along. That video went big and I was like, oh my God, like maybe I can do something from this. And then obviously we, we were going Bolton home and away from then on, but that's yeah. when I started to build like people from other club to watch my Bolton vlogs. Yeah, Because people, people keep up with Bolton now for us. And that's incredible. Yes. Because like yeah. I'll go to another game, make a vlog, but then they'll watch the channel and see my Bolton vlogs and, and feel like they're part of it from us. And that's pr- I think that's one of the most special things. Well, you like, yeah, I know what you're saying. You get that with Watford. With Watford like, yeah, the people, amount of people, yeah. conversion of I'm now a Watford fan, mm. you know, in the comments, they're now my second I, team. I see that all the time. It's yeah. incredible. But like, I think it's fair to say you guys, you know, you're getting big time now. So like, you know, you get in there, aren't you? Like, like, so like we were talking this morning, weren't we? And we said, right biggest kind of name in your phone book now or in your DMs you kind of do DMs like go, just think Arsene about Wenger in your yeah. DMs on, on WhatsApp you have not got yeah. Arsene Wenger I said Merry Christmas to him he responded shut <laughs> your yeah. mouth yeah. Leo yeah what, what's he he's like UEFA like sort of big dog now as well Arsenal forever yeah. Arsene Wenger is in Arsene your phone Wenger. book Arsene and Wenger. you've WhatsApped him yeah he responded <laughs> he responded <Love> that. <laughs> this is incredible I, I tell a different generation same question my answer will be Alistair Campbell Okay. Oh yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Who, of course, was the spin doctor for yeah. Tony Blair, yeah. and cynics would say he ran the country. Yeah, basically, uh, with Tony Blair as a front. Um, Alistair Campbell is a massive Burnley fan. He's a massive football fan, and he loves Thogden and Thogdad stuff. And his son Callum is a great lad. He supports Burnley, Scotland, and Olympic Marseille. 
and we just become mates. Um, so that would be my answer. Your big dog, and, yeah. And you're in this, you know. He's online right now. Awesome. Guys, he is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> this so is I, incredible. I, 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 I messaged him saying Merry Christmas. He responded. And then I asked him about the Super League and he didn't respond. So what, what is it yeah. kind of like when you're bored? It's like, what are you up to ask? He's read it though, at least. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you, you don't He's mind getting re- left on red with Arsene Oh, Bengen, yeah. I, I literally couldn't care. But it's just so funny how... Um, yeah, how he actually responded to me. I think that's so nice. Like he probably just went, doesn't even know who I am, but because it's in his, because it's on WhatsApp, he'll respond. And it's a nice of, message though as well. Do you know what I mean? And he's replied with thank you very much kind of thing. It, yeah. it kind of leads me on to how we sort of got in contact of, to start with. Do you know what I mean? I remember, because like I say, I used to watch anyway, the watch along sort of thing. But I remember you sent me a DM on, I think it was Twitter or Instagram, one of them anyway. And it was, is it, uh, Messi or Ronaldo basically Ben mm-hmm. and I came back with Ronaldo straight away because for me yeah. Ronaldo is I've seen him up close and personal and I know what he does for it so it will always be Ronaldo and then it went from there because I remember getting that DM so this is how it works right yeah. honestly yeah. this yeah. is how it works guys I got the DM from you obviously Thogden and I was buzzing so much that straight away I showed my son and I went look who's, look who sent me a message yeah, but, yeah and, and yeah. he was like is that, is that actually th- I was like yeah it's actually thugged in right? so then we started having a little bit of a conversation blah 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 screenshotted it and sent it to me screenshotting it a buzz <laughs> yeah, like, I was yeah. like look thugged in a lot of guy likes so I'll buzz off you anyway um, and I then like because I know Louis loves you I, I sent you a message didn't I? I said any chance you can like send a little whatsapp message through like a little video just saying hello yeah. Louis and all that and yeah. then you sent that through obviously that's how we got the phone number and that's how it, but that's how it goes like mm, yeah. you, you, honestly I, I think th- this YouTube world shows you that people watch you I guarantee you there's hundreds of footballers out there hundreds of celebrities that you probably wouldn't even dream of will know who you are and watch your stuff as well it's it's a funny old world it's mad isn't it, it? and it, it's funny yeah. because the question you ask the, the answer that I'd give would be different depending on who's at who's the audience so if a 15 year old says oh who's the you know who's your biggest who's the biggest name you've met I'd say Ollie Ball yeah, yeah. <laughs> now because Ollie Ball right now yeah. hundreds of millions of views yeah, on yeah, TikTok yeah. but Someone in the thirties doesn't know Ollie Ball. They're Bolton, Bolton fans, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, Ollie, uh, the Jacob guy is he? Ollie's uh, Everton fan. Yeah, right. yeah, big Everton yeah. fan. But yeah. they're both yeah. from Bolton. Well, so, you've got a little mate, they're, they're so funny yeah. them too right so we've have had, you met them yeah so we, I haven't actually met them in person but um, we've had we've had a few little conversations and stuff like that to the point where they set because I've, I've had them do a prediction thing on, on, the, uh, yeah, on the channel didn't that, I? Yeah, I had them yeah. do a prediction thing so I, I got their number whatever, and unbeknownst to me Jacob just set up a little group chat and he literally called it the cycling GK group chat kind of thing yeah so every now and then though even now like he did one the other week they would just send like a voicemail and yeah. Like a voice message, sorry, a voice message. And every voice message is virtually identical where, all right, Ben... How do you do a northern accent? What's the Bolton accent? What's the what's the northern one? Yeah, bloody hell! How's they doing? Yeah, like? that's it. Yeah, hello Ben. And then he'll leave it like. <laughs> which, and it, which accent was that? Oh yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. but it'll be silent. It won't yeah. say anything for about five seconds. And he'll go, I had this idea. Yeah. And I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> Want to get you on a podcast? at Bolton yeah. Stadium and, and, and he, and he, but he would just rattle off he doesn't care like no, they're no. absolutely bonkers the pair yeah. of them yeah, like, they are. they're absolutely bonkers but they're lovable they're so kind of lovable and nice aren't they Yeah. and it's brilliant to see these lads coming through and having the courage age 15 yeah. or 16 to do that I think to that's magnificent and if in any way you know the likes of us have inspired them to have the confidence I think that is yeah, I think for that's sure. a wonderful thing yeah they're top lads to be fair right are we going to move on to the boxing we've got, we've got I've got right so you asked earlier about thumbnails, okay? Yeah, I make all guys. I make all my thumbnails. I hold my hands up. I love doing it. Wow! <laughs> I get all sorts of grief about my thumbnails. Yeah, yeah. Only from sometimes Tom, they really. change. They they do change. Yeah. <laughs> like, Let's not get into this. All right. He hates me for changing so the thumbnails on my videos. Going to back me up here that he's absolutely ruining the algorithm by changing the thumbnails every five seconds. It would have been the case, but now it actually helps. This is what I'm talking that, about. Yeah, it that. used to be that used to be the that used to be the deal, and then they changed it like a, a month ago, two months ago, oh, and it helps and it, push and it, it, and it helps bit. pushing it exactly. You so I'm after how... changing it after like a few hours, yeah. That's just made my life miserable. Yeah, mate, I'm not even kidding. But don't overchange it. Like, change it once or twice. So, but yeah, like, for sure, don't take the mic. But yeah. I, I, so I do all the thumbnails, right? I love it. I've gotten into it. there's a there's a there's an app called Canva. So it's a website, Canva. You got, and I've just learned it like the back of my hand kind of thing. I love doing it. I love messing about with it. I've made some because we wanted to know. Like, obviously, you spoke about the beef you've had before, sort of thing. So I've got yeah. a wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Don't mention any names or anything. I've got a few little like pictures that I'm going to stick on the thing behind yeah, me. Yeah. I've made these up last night, by the way. I awesome. toiled over. 
over these, Brilliant. by the way. I absolutely toiled over them. So here's the first oh, one. Oh, that is incredible. <laughs> Here we go. I don't mind being the ref. Look at this. <laughs> what an edit, by the way. Was this you? Yeah. That is brilliant. They to made this. Yeah, so this oh, is one. Talk us through the picture on the, on the audio. Man. So <laughs> here we go here. We have got... got um, some of this. So on the okay. screen behind me, guys, I have got a... It's basically the end of a boxing match or the start of a boxing match. I haven't got a clue. The referee is standing in the middle. He's holding the hands of the two boxers. On the left, we've got Thogdad. He's got a bit of an angry looking face on him there. <laughs> he it? does, yeah. Thogdad looks a little bit annoyed, right? Yeah. It looks like he wants to cave somebody's face in. <laughs> and the guy that he wants to cave in, it looks to me like that is Greg Paul. Greg Paul. <laughs> As in Logan Paul's dad, Jake Paul's dad. Yeah. And then we've got the main man in the middle, Thogden, Whee. referee in the bout. It's a bouter, isn't it? It's it an absolute down. cracker. Can we, just, can we just start this off? With, yeah. This, this bit with your call out for him on Jack's yeah. podcast yeah. was the politest call out. I know. I know. I know. I know. I, I'm a polite guy. No, no, there's part of me. You know, I love sport, and particularly I love playing footy, cricket, tennis. Why? I've never boxed. No, actually, no. I. I boxed once, and uh, I don't know if you know this story. So I was living out in Russia for about a decade, and a mate of mine, um, Tom, was like, oh, Stephen, you know, and he was a bit of a boxer. He's one of these lads who's always doing this, you know, but he was an amateur boxer. He's like, oh, I've got a great coach. You've got to come along and get some training. So I went along, this Russian, I didn't speak a word of English, had an hour's session with him. I thought, right, I'm really into this. A couple of weeks later, I'm like, Tom, can we kind of go back for a second lesson? He's like, I'm afraid not. I'm afraid the coach has been done for murder. You oh won't, you won't be seeing him for about 15 years. Oh, my gosh. So I never had a second boxing lesson. But I think there's something about boxing that is very primeval. It's very match, very yeah, male, isn't it? For sure. We've got to you do know, another I know some great event. female boxers as well. So this part of me always wanted to get into the ring and test myself, you know? Yeah, I might for last sure. a second. I'm, I'm not pretending I'd be great at it. Hmm. It's something I've never done. It's something I'd like to do. The trouble is, I think I think I'd never get permission to fight a Greg Paul because of my age. Yeah, okay. Now, I, think I don't think it would ever happen. There's Pete, but Mike Tyson fought someone, and he's like That's much Mike older. Yeah, they call it an exhibition, don't they? There's yeah. no winner. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You could do it with like no, yeah, exactly, no winner and stuff like that. You can always make it happen, but it's whether Greg Paul is going to respond to you. He used to respond to your messages, and now he's stopped. No, ever since, ever no. Since, scared not, dog not dad. Really you scared. scared him off me. The funny thing is, I was talking to Jack mate about this, and he's telling his stories about Greg Paul, and basically saying, yeah. yeah, he's a knob end. <laughs> so there's actually more beef between Jack mate and, and Greg. And there is the back of that. Those yeah. two should be fighting. But look, I would love it. That would be a great transatlantic fight, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course. It and I do it. I do it for charity. I wouldn't make a penny from it. We do it for mental health charities, and it would happen. But I'd have to do six months of proper training because I don't want to. You don't want to go in there. And I be, think that'd be the beauty of it, though. I'd yeah. sign up to something like that just for the fact that I would have six months of dedication of yes. pushing yourself at something completely brand new to see how you get. And I don't like uh, the sort of the ethics of it and the the things, the permutations that could happen from it would worry me a little bit. And being a father like yourself, like yeah. I wouldn't want my dad doing it. But it is yeah. what it is. I think if you take it as it is with a pinch of salt and have it as an exhibition, you're not going gung ho. You're not flinging frigging haymakers all over the shop I think it could work <laughs> yes. at some, some would point, you ever would you ever get in a I don't like say I don't know to be honest with you like it, yeah. uh, the it would only be a bit part, of fun the only part of it that would really interest me is the training part of it yeah. like, yeah. You know, like say yeah. if you could dedicate six months or a year to a schedule where you know you are strictly sticking to this thing I would love that because I love that element yeah. of like sport in general basically it's basically pre-season it's, it's, it's like <laughs> a really long pre-season yeah. a yeah. brutal pre-season yeah, and of for course sure. we've, we've all seen Fight Club haven't we you know and yeah. anyone who's seen that film exactly like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right so let's move on so anyway let's if guys if we can get this fight set up by the way let's make it work I think it'll be an absolute bouter Thog yeah. Dad versus Greg Paul on the next slide hey. let me talk you through this one <laughs> no way <laughs> that is brilliant I was just on the phone to him it's, Where's he I, if, I, if I knew you knew Ellis I would have posted I don't to you. know Ellis at oh, all you know now, but yeah. obviously watching some of your videos and I've seen some bits and bobs in the past kind of thing so guys again let me just explain for you that are listening with no pictures we have got Thogden on the right his arm is raised in the air like he has just won the fight that's looks, what I like that's what I like he looks like he hasn't even been touched to be honest it looks like it's been a doddle of a fight yeah um, on the left hand side we've got Ellis Platten the guy that does the kind of mystery box the shirts all yeah. that kind of stuff it's pretty cool yeah. to be fair yeah, yeah, so he's, that's a he's a nice lad yeah. He's a nice, yeah, can tell he's a nice lad it's really good, really good um, Ellis's face looks a little bit bemused he's not happy that he's not Thug happy. Mum he's not happy that Thug Mum who is the referee <laughs> I couldn't Amazing. find a picture 
picture of Thogmon, by the way, so I've just have to use the stock photo. Uh, <laughs> but Thogmon has awarded the fight to her son, no impartiality whatsoever. She literally just went for her son as the winner, regardless of whether he actually won the fight or not. They're actually women fighters. I don't know if you can tell. That one's got sort of boobs on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my pecs after going to the gym two weeks. The pecs. Um, but yeah, so what do you think? What, do you th- what are you saying about this, Thogden? Do you think this could be something that you want to, want to get involved on in the future? Because you're a absolutely. good age for it, to be fair, aren't you? Yeah, no, absolutely. I'd, I'd love to have a boxing fight. Um, Ellis is a top lad, though. I would not fight Ellis. Yeah, it's too I know, nice. I know, I know. We I know. once did a thumbnail at the hashtag game. It was my biggest enemy. It, yeah. And everyone was like, oh, you got a box, all of this. So it's yeah. funny how you made that edit. But no, I would honest, I would happily get it, it, have a boxing fight. So I think it'd be so, so cool. You need to find somebody a very similar sort of height and weight. You yeah. have to be in their class. You have to be you in do. their division. Yeah. So is there any names that spring to mind straight away? Who have you got beef with? There's no one you've got beef with. I'm not just, having it. Just FTV doesn't Robbie. have beef. Robbie, Robbie, he's too big for me, though. Oh, my God. We're <laughs> not dredging twice, this up He's literally twice my size. I can't. <laughs> but he's, he's, but he's even, like dad's age. Even then, though, what are you thinking? You fancy yourself? Oh, no chance. No, chance. <laughs> no, no, no. If I moved, I'd be all right, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I'd, 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 but I'd you still think Don Robbie from AFTV is going to do you in, yeah? Probably. But <laughs> will he have the fitness for 12 rounds? Exactly, mate. Big <laughs> doggy. Bob and Weave for a couple rounds, you'll tire him out and exactly. boom, he's just going to have to tap out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just got to be like careful. I'm doggy on that. The old, uh, the old left, right, good night. I yeah, exactly. Reckon. In and out, in yeah, and out, myself. mate. In and out. Bob yeah. and Weave. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just keep your distance, yeah? You know? So there we go. Don Robbie. You know Thogden's coming for you, mate. And I Let's fancy him, mate. I fancy him. You know, there's many ways to skin a cat. And I think Theo's got it in him, all right? I'm, I'm already <laughs> thinking. I'm, I've got tactics already. Working a plan out. Brilliant. Oh, I love it, lads. We've got, we've got I'm buzzing t- with these. I'm yeah, they're so good. Yeah, they're so brilliant. <laughs> we've got to touch on the, um, the trims. Yeah. Thogden, because I was expecting you to come in today with, like, some kind of bleached... Um, Phil Foden hair yeah, or yeah. something like that we nearly did it and we've got this brilliant barber called Christian um, the next barber experience out in uh, Old Street and the other day I went along there and I said I just fancied a Richarlison cut so I sent Christian <laughs> as you do a picture of Richarlison <laughs> yeah I just yeah, thought, this what is... made you pick a Richarlison I don't one know <laughs> but that was very similar to a Foden cut pre-Gaza yeah. Foden and, um, and, and I didn't tell Thog Mum about this but anyway Christian did this haircut. I put it straight onto Instagram and it suddenly got to like 100,000 likes. I thought, what's going on here? It was Rich about Charleston. it, mate. It was absolutely... <laughs> yeah. well, for the guys it. that are watching, we'll put a picture on we'll put a picture on screen now, but yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is absolutely about it. So I've just gone through my life having accountants' haircuts because I was used to it. <laughs> And suddenly I've, I don't have to anymore. But anyway, I got back and Thog Mum saw it and she's like, you never do that again. Oh, never. A proper telling off. And I, yeah, and I was tempted last week to get the Foden cut and the bleach in. I would have done it if it hadn't been for Thog Mum's reaction. Now, Theo here should get the Foden cut. Without yeah, doubt. Because sure. he did a video. He says, if this gets 30,000 l- likes, then I'm getting the Foden cut. It got 31,000 likes. It's got Where's way more Oh, it's you know what? I would have done it if Foden scored in the first game. You, you've got to do it. I know, I know. That's how I it works, mate. That's I how this world works. I will still do it. It's coming home, so I'll still do it. So when's when? So you're at Germany on Tuesday, Germany yeah. England. It's yeah. now Thursday. Yeah. See so what you've got five days to get the old. Um, oh, mate, I've I'm gonna have to make it happen. Chucked you under the bus there, but mate, sorry. It might have to. It might have to happen. You know. It, it, Imagine I get it though, and and it's just about to go. You know, like it doesn't go straight away. It doesn't go to the bleach color. Imagine it. I get it. The game happens, but the bleach happens after the game, right? And we lose. Uh, so I get the trim. It's coming home. Right we there. don't talk about that. We don't it's talk about that. Coming home. But you've got a scenario plan. They are, for you, sure. make, you make a what promise to your subs. Timo Werner scores the winner. The whole of England saying Southgate out, and everyone's fuming. All of a sudden, there was once we were. And I've got Foden trim, like I'm looking like Gaza '96. We just knocked down the round of 16. I look like a mug. Last year we were doing a live stream down in Montenegro. We have a holiday house there, and um, Leon. Who were they playing? Was it Man City? Uh, yeah, Man City. Yeah. Leon, Man City, and, and Theo pre live stream is like, if Leon win this game, I'm getting the Leon badge tattooed on my ass cheeks. Leon win. They won and won. I remember. No tattoo. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a pattern here, lads. I didn't have you down as a shirker. No, a shirker me neither. twice. You gotta follow it through, mate. Do you know what? I think Fogmum's gonna shout at you if you do that because that's he's got lovely hair, hasn't he? Yeah, oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Lovely wavy hair yeah. you've got, mate. He's, he's was very you, precious mate. about you. Fogmum is the first person to go. Like, I don't even get to decide yeah. most things. Like yeah. Fogmum runs my life. Literally, I might be 20 years old, but she's still. They everything I do, do, mate. That's mum's for you. That's exactly, what their job exactly. is. That's Especially their when job, you live mate. with them. Exactly, it's just a yeah. Russian mum thing. Honestly, they're so protective of their kids. If I got the phone trim, I don't think she'd ever look at me the same. 
Uh, and no one can see Dogman. It's just behind the scenes. Yeah. So, right, guys. So, just, just let me just finally touch on Bolton, okay? So, Bolton SC. I remember playing against Bolton back in the day, right? So, um, one thing springs to mind particularly. We were playing at home. I think it was, I was at West Brom at the time. And it was when you had the likes of Kevin Davies. You had Kevin Nolan. Um, it was when Analka, I think, was playing as yeah. well. I think yeah. if you look back in history, like some of the players that Bolton had back in the day, by Fernando the way. Hiero. Fernando Hierro. Yeah. Did you yes. see Jessica Line and what a goal is. Yuri Jorkayev. Yuri Jorkayev. Like, yeah. Ivan Campo. Ivan Campo. Stelios Giannakopoulos. Yeah. Oh my God, there yeah. you go. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, but, like littered with history, littered with names, okay? But I remember this one particular game. Um, the West say we were playing at home. It was West Brom Bolton. They get a corner, Bolton. Kevin Nolan stands on me. He was oh, really? honestly the best I've ever seen at man marking a goalkeeper really, yeah. on a corner. It was outrageous, right? He would never get foul. He would never get a foul like against a goalie. He was well class at it. He stood there. He put his arms out and he was like, yeah. no, I'm standing there. That's it. It's fine. And he stopped me moving. It was incredible, right? The corner came in. I tried to get a punch, got a horrible little punch on it, <laughs> dropped down. I think it was actually Analka who tapped the ball in. Nice. But that, that for me was just disgusting. And I think it's a massive skill has gone out of the game having that big tank of a striker like yeah. Kevin Davies like Kevin Nolan them guys you know yeah. what I mean that would be up there and they would do a serious job for you wouldn't they absolutely, absolutely. was it Davies who, who who was next to you Nolan. Nolan Kevin Nolan really? oh he was, he was tank, horrible though, he? he was he a was tank a good player, really, really, really good player. Nolan was um, yeah he was unbelievable for us that was a great little mix up I mean, those, yeah. those years that decade we spent at the top level I mean and, and two of the years we went to Europe of course yeah. it was a combination and you've, you've, you've hit the nail on the head of really hard mostly you know English players like Nolan Davis but also you had like Goodney Bergson yeah, at the back yeah. you had Yossi in goal Mixu Patalainen was he a Bolton uh, player yes he yeah, was yeah, 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 that was a little bit day. before but we you ha- but you had these incredible players like Anelka that you'd never thought you'd see yeah. on the Bolton shirt. In pitch. a Bolton shirt. In yeah. a Bolton shirt. Yeah. And Hierro and, and Ivan Campo was... But we even had like low Hiero. knees from like Sturridge and Wilshire for a season. Oh, for sure, well. and, yeah. And yeah. my view... I and, played and, against Sturridge. Sorry, quickly. I played against Sturridge as well for, for when he was at Bolton. He, he That was when he was just about to kick off, wasn't he? He was about to go big time. I think yeah. that was the season that was his springboard, basically, to start making a name for himself. Yeah. That it was where Jack Wilshire for a while and and for me you know I've been watching Bolton for 46 years you know man and boy so that that 10 years was just like I'm just going to enjoy this and, and the trip when we went to Madrid I didn't tell Thogman that we, we went to Madrid that week for for, for football yeah we had, a, we had a lovely week in, in Madrid and but you know to be watching Atletico Madrid against Bolton Wanderers yeah you know when I first started watching Bolton Wanderers in 1975 Sam Allardyce, big centre half, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, Different you know, world. The, the likes of him, Peter Reid was playing. No, he was a good player. Oh, blooming hell, so bloody players, right he was, yeah. You, most of the time, Bolton have just been um, an average, probably yeah. second tier club. But just for that brief period, it was just spectacular. Yeah, good 10 years, to be fair. Good decade, good weren't years, it? Yeah. yeah Great manager, yeah. Sam Allardyce, as well, yeah. Yeah, good bloke. I've met him a couple of times, really good bloke. Yeah. Um, and like when, oh yeah, he's someone I'd, I'd love to have on the night out. Yeah. If I could change, that's it. a great big show, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. can and we edit that in? Let's edit that in, Frank. Let's get Big Sam. Big yeah. Sam has to be on that. So when you're talking about like managers and stuff, I always think he was an old manager of yours and stuff. And if like going out on the town, he's always a bit smooth or seemed that way. Alan Pardew. Oh wow, yeah, he is. I can imagine birds and yeah. I can imagine really? he's all over the gang. You seen that picture, the one where he's got like four or five birds around him and he's on a night out and he's giving <laughs> it a proper like pose into the yeah, camera yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, that's he loves it, doesn't he? He loves it, mate. Was he your gaffer love. for a... He was only there for a little bit, but he was like the manager when we went to Barcelona and you know we had the taxi gate and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Oh, yeah. I think I'm gonna have to bring that up on another podcast sometime somewhere because it is a Belton story, yeah, right, honestly. Time, but yeah. he he yeah, he was um he was a different kind of manager. He was a different manager to what I'm used to. He's yeah, a very different play. manager. Yeah. With, yeah. with the like, um, so just going back onto the channel, like with the, obviously the live streams now, me and Ben have been talking about this. We obviously we've started, you know, the watch alongs and everything else. And there's a really interesting conversation around mainstream media and how, how the shift and how the change and how it's evolving. Like, and we said this morning, didn't we? Me, you and Frank were chatting about today. And we said, how long will it be before a live a game is streamed live on YouTube as they are, with an option of Thogden watch along, Cycling GK watch along as the commentary. Do you think we're far from something like that? Oh, that's Can you a, imagine that? Yeah. It's hard to know, isn't it? I mean, we talked about we're all sort of pioneers of this game. 
And, and partly, part of the reason why Thogden works or the cycling goalkeeper works is because you're the first to do it. You True. know, you're one of the first to sort of footballers to yeah. actually do this. So I know it's not quite answering your question, but imagine if there were 20 Ben Fosters doing this. It wouldn't quite be no, the same. It's not the same. Yeah. And if there were 20. But my point mm. being that this whole thing is going to change so much over the next few decades. It's going to change beyond, beyond all recognition. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's almost guesswork to ask what's it going to be like in five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. And you, like with yourself, Theo, um, obviously you, you do what you do really, really well. But it was interesting to see you pop up on Saturday Social on Sky yeah. uh, a couple nice, of months yeah. ago. No, I love um, that. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd love to do more stuff like that, especially because it's, it's, yeah, it's really professional and you've got to be there and, you know, they rehearse everything and it's, it's great. But just to see yourself on Sky, you know, I remember starting as a kid with like, five subscribers it's just my mates the fact it's got to a point where I can literally turn on the telly and see myself for a bit it's just like unbelievable unbelievable so you how's would, that come you'd be up for doing a bit more of that yeah lo I'd love I'd go down that route I mean we all don't know how YouTube's going to be in 10 20 years I've, I'm very confident that's going to be the, still the biggest platform but if I was to adapt into something else I'd, I'd happily be a football presenter and some you know. I think you'd be good at that Theo I, yeah. I do honestly I think you'd be really really good at that I think half the battle is having the people skills the personality the personability mm. to be able to get it across and you've got that honestly mate for a 20 year old well done mate well I done. Appreciate good that job is. dad you've done a good job there Thank mate you. Yeah. honestly absolutely cracking appreciate that no, it's yeah, nice, cracking, nice to mate. hear yeah. right one of the questions we love to ask as well is we're getting to the end of the pod now guys what is the biggest mistake you've made in YouTube, it could be production, it could be film, it could be whatever it is. I like that question. It, the biggest it's mistake just... you've made. Biggest mistake. Because let me, I'll give you a bit, a little bit of background yeah, to why, yeah. why I asked the question. So yeah. we filmed a video a couple of weeks ago. Um, Tom, normally, what happens is Tom will send the footage over to the editor Frank, oh, yeah, yeah. and he will upload it. He will send it on WeTransfer as most people do, mm. and then he will upload the footage. He said he had, we had yeah. three files to send. Sent the three. Um, he got the email said that said that they've been sent. Then you downloaded them. One of the files didn't actually send properly though. I deleted um, the files. Basically. He basically <laughs> deleted the files yeah, yeah, yeah. before yeah. he had chance. Before the editor had, had chance that before. to actually I've done see that before. it. So the camera was literally one in the corner. It looked a yeah. bit weird. The video still went out. It wasn't the end of the world, but it just got us thinking that might be a really good question to ask people because guaranteed, like you've lost videos or this was supposed to happen, that's supposed to happen, but We've it didn't it quite materialize. We went um, on. This was like when I was very small, but we went to uh, Hong Kong. And my dad was like, go out there, like do do some travel vlogging. Because I, I was down the football route at the time, FIFA football, all that stuff. You were like, you should do more travel vlog stuff. And I, I kind of understood the football world, but I didn't understand the travel vlog world. But we, but I remember I literally lost all the files to that trip um, on my SD card. It was all, um, it all, I had the problem where you put it into the laptop and it wasn't, oh, it no. didn't sync or whatever. And I lost all the content from that trip. Yeah. So that was one of the biggest biggest stinkers that have happened. Oh, but there is, more a, there is a bigger stinker. I'll go into it and I'll have to be careful here. So about <laughs> four years, so early on, Theo trusted someone to oh, uh, yeah. to I help how him I remember this. to help him with editing and, and the management of the channel. It was an informal agreement yeah. with a schoolmate and it went well until one day the guys fell out, probably over next to nothing. Yeah. And this guy who was, um, you know, kind of the, the IT whiz decided, well, we've, we've fallen out. I'm in a bad mood. Delete. Deleted the whole channel. No. Yeah. Deleted wow. the whole channel. Now, this yeah. story got... Thogden. Deleted yeah. Thogden. Deleted yeah. the whole channel. And, of course, Theo was in pieces. But this became a national story. It, it was in, like, News of the World and... I think I was on, like... The Sun and the Mirror and, yeah. At the, at the time, I was on, like, 25,000 subs, though. So it wasn't, like, huge, no, but I was starting but, to grow. Growing, though, yeah. But, starting to but grow. his dream, yeah. with the press of a button by some annoyed kid, um, the, the channel was deleted. And it took, actually, Theo had to speak to some really big YouTubers to get the channel Casper Lee, back. I don't know if you know him. Different no, world. So yeah, but he's just one of the I old... I suppose the mistake yeah. was trusting the yeah, wrong dig person. Yeah, the I, I will, and try and get it back, basically. Yeah, I will and say that, that that was my bi biggest mistake, trusting him. Like as part of the channel, because you never know where you're going to be when you come to the end of the channel, right? So if you have an agreement with him, you know, he, you know, you never know when you get six hundred thousand subs, he'll yeah. try and try and claim something from you. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. You, you've got to be so yeah. careful whatever you agree at the start. Luckily, that is all resolved now, and um, we got the channel back because YouTube, ch you know, they yeah, they help push sure, everything yeah. up. Got the subscribers back somehow. Don't know how it works, but they found a way. So luckily, it's all worked out. But that would definitely be my biggest mistake. Like I was, I was young and I didn't trust the right people. I think, I think there's a big old message there that 
for any guys trying to get into YouTube, getting started, you do not need a million people, do you? No, you, you don't. Do not. Know, like, no. we're a small team. I don't know about you guys, but it's literally me, Tom, and Frank, the editor. I, did, I thought there were more people behind me. No, when no I saw chance whatsoever. Yeah. We keep it completely in house. I've grew yeah. up with Tom. He's one of my best friends. I've known yeah. him literally my whole life. Frank's come on board since day one, and he's been there for everything. He knows the back of mm. everything. My wife helps out with bits and bobs, yeah. doesn't she? That's she'll, class, that. She'll do loads of it's this. That's the best and way that. to do it. Because the, the way YouTube started was you put a camera in your bedroom and you talk about something exactly that was always the way that they push that sort of content they don't want all this corporate loads no, of glamour you don't need glamour yeah. loads you don't of, need the glamour you know like you're not walking around the training ground with a cameraman behind you the whole for time for sure it loses that sort of that personality yeah. that personability yeah. as well you it know does. That. I think the key word is authenticity yeah, exactly. we've realised yeah, they've got those to be authentic so you know what you see the thog dad you see is real the thog dad you see is real in fact the other day we do we do these sort of the live streams with thog mum's pictures behind us and thog bear <laughs> yeah, and all of that yeah. it is purposefully amateur now we changed it at one point green screen you know, a brick background. It was all professional. Everyone's like, we don't like that. Yeah. yeah. Let's go back to how people it was prefer before. us. Yeah. People wanted it. Can I just say, Tom, that if the worst happens, even if I take your wife off your summit, please never delete my channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please <laughs> never ever delete my channel. The, yeah. the, there's a million things you could do to me before that. Just don't delete yeah, my YouTube can't channel. Make that okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Right, guys, thank you very much. That is it for today's Fozcast from the special guest in studio today, Thogden, absolute legend. How are we doing? Thogdad, hey. superstar as absolute Thogdad. usual. Thank you, Ben. And honestly, I do think you need to look into doing these like bedtime stories yeah. kind of thing because your boy, I can listen to his voice all day long, guys. What this guy, guy, he's got so many stories. He's beautiful. I don't even, I don't even hear this stuff. He so you're lucky you bring it out. It's beautiful. What a lovely voice. What an absolute superstar. Thank Tom, you. as usual. Yeah. Nailed it, did that weird thing again. Always. I'll see you all soon. Ben Foster, The Fozcast. <laughs>